opening Bitcoin recovering uh, some of its earlier losses, hovering around $64,000, just shy of that this morning after logging its worst single day drop since the FTX collapse, according to Yahoo Finance data. Now, the cryptocurrency falling from all time highs it just hit last week. Joining us now, we've got Owen Lau, who is the Oppenheimer Executive Director and Senior Analyst. Owen, for this dip, should investors be buying in uh, or should they be a little bit wary of what's taking place? Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. So I think the, the, the reason for this correction are a couple of things, right? Number one, Bitcoin was up 150% in 2023. It's up 50% year to day. And then if you look at the recent strength in, this, uh, in, in Bitcoin, a lot of, I think a big part of that is tied to the recent strength in the spot, the net inflows into the net spot Bitcoin ETF. And we started to see some net outflows from this product. And finally, and what you just talked about was the um, inflation data was hotter than expected. And we are actually looking to see whether the Fed would cut uh, three times this year. So what I would say is maybe investors can be a little bit more patient and wait for a little bit for this correction. When we talk about the downside risk here, Owen, how big of a drop are you expecting? We're right above 63,000 today. Could we drop below 60,000? Yeah, it, 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 it is possible, but I think it's, again, this is data dependent. So what we just start to see was the kind of the bigger outflows from this product. I think uh, yesterday we saw $600 million outflow from all these products, uh, mainly driven by Grayscale. And then um, the Fed decision today is pretty important as well. If the Fed decided to, hey, let's just cut two rates, I think there will be further room to drop for, for, for Bitcoin. So I think right now we, we're just like data dependent and it's possible that it can dip further. You know, it, it's really interesting as we think about the number of ETFs that have really boomed the inflow into crypto in, in general here. Now, when it comes to where we might see rotation or profit taking along the way, what type of shocks should holders of Bitcoin or, or crypto more broadly be ready for or prepared for? I think if you look at the history of Bitcoin volatility, it has been one of the most volatile assets. So I think for new investors coming into this space, if they don't know about the history of Bitcoin, just go back and check about the history. Expect volatility in investing in this asset class. So this is a high beta technology company. If you want to like use the equities as, as an analogy, uh, some people use that as a digital gold. But in any way, if you look at the history, Bitcoin ha it has been very volatile. So expect volatility going forward. Oh, and going back to what you were saying earlier, just in regards to the sentiment shift that we have seen, do you think it's warranted at this point, given the fact that there is many reasons, like you have laid out in recent research notes, to be optimistic about the price in the long term? Yeah, I think over the long term, uh, I, we are still optimistic because of a couple of reasons. Number one, we still see further adoption for spot Bitcoin ETF. We are just still in the early innings. And remember, Bitcoin is a global phenomenon. So I think uh, BlackRock listed in uh, US and they are just uh, going to list or they just listed IBIT, um, their spot Bitcoin ETF in Brazil. So you can tell uh, many of these asset managers can list this product overseas. So and this product is homogeneous, like you, you can also buy Bitcoin in Asia, in Singapore and also in, in Europe. They're the same. And the second point is uh, right now, I think the headwinds we are seeing um, part of that came from probably came from the Fed. So if the Fed decided to, OK, let's cut more rate next year, we still see the case and catalyst that that can support the Bitcoin price longer term. So I would say longer term, we are still optimistic about the Bitcoin price action. Oh, and just lastly, while we have you, uh, I was looking at one of the blog posts, uh, blog posts from Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong uh, posted yesterday where he talks about some of the features moving forward, popular examples, digitizing the dollar, fast, cheap global payments, business model for creatives, decentralized social media under the umbrella of this title. What is crypto good for anyway? Who are, and, and of course, Coinbase has a lot to gain by this, but at the end of the day, who are some of the biggest crypto touching equity market plays that you've got your eye on that could uh, continue to see a sustained inflow or sustained positive reaction as a result of a lot of the new highs we've seen this year in crypto? 
Yeah, thank you for pointing out this point. I think there is a misunderstanding about digital assets have no use cases. And Brian was so right that point out some of the actual use cases in this space. Um, right now, the largest one obviously is Coinbase. And there are some private companies that I don't want to comment at this point that could potentially disrupt the whole payment space and remittance space and, and, and for longer term. So I do think tokenization is one of the use cases remittance and global uh, money transfer is another big use case for digital assets. So I would say at current you know, landscape, I am still uh, pretty positive on Coinbase that can capitalize this opportunity. But longer term, you'll see more private companies going into public market and we, we can talk more about that. Oh, and you got to give us one. Give us one private market company that you've got your eye on, <laughs> that you can't wait to make a public debut. <laughs> I'll tell you in, in 12 months. In 12 months, okay, all right. I'm gonna set my calendar or my kitchen timer. Owen, thanks so much, appreciate the time. Owen Lau, who is the Oppenheimer Executive Director and Senior Analyst, thanks so much. Thanks.